Last time on Doki Doki Tropical Rain. What was supposed to be a good day had turned into a horrible one. The bright light had the bright light that filled my life had dimmed. And the days after the carnival felt like just one long nightmare. What? Why are we in a cemetery? I wiped my eyes. Was that just a dream or a nightmare? I'm pretty sure that was a nightmare because of course, I'm sure Yuri didn't just die from all that like cheese. It was just a dream. Hey! <laughs> Don't play the blame game. Uh, I sighed again. I walked up to Yuri and slowly shook her awake. Hey, Yuri. Oh, she's in a hospital gown and bandages on her head. Okay. Yuri. She slowly opened her eyes. She slowly stretched, but very clearly had a tough time moving her arm. Hello, Finn. I, uh... Her voice drooped. Yuri? I, uh... I am... Glad you're here. What the heck was that? Well, of course. I'm glad you're okay. Ah, <sighs> uh, think the maker. Oh my <laughs> well, things are going a-okay for us so far, and seems like Yuri is uh, recovering very well, and She's right here, in a hospital gown. I hope you Yuri fans are happy because she's alright. What are you guys thinking about? Anyway, let's continue. I'm glad you're okay. Uh, um, sorry. It's probably so obvious, huh? Hmm? What's so obvious? I sweat dropped. The... well... According to the doctors, the part of the uh, uh, my brain that's wired to pronounce uh that it apparently was well uh screwed up when I fell. Jeez, that that took a lot out of you, didn't it? She nodded sadly. It's very unfortunate, but I... I'm very thankful to be alive. I... So am I, Yuri. I'm so, so thankful you're okay. That mm, thing... That's nothing. We can get you to speech therapy or some crap like that. I'm just so glad you're not dead. And I... <laughs> Yuri and I... <laughs> We both said at the same time. I stopped talking. You first. Uh, I was hesitating. I... I held back. I'm too old for that crap. No, you. Uh, okay. Look, Finn, I... I'm so sorry. Huh? I mean, it was what I wanted to hear, but... I still didn't expect it. It just caused you so much trouble and I... I didn't want it to end up like this. Uh... Well, I... I'm not sure anybody did, Yuri. But it's okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. I'm sorry for yelling, but... I need you to know how genuinely sorry I... I is. It would be funny had it not been said for devastating reasons. Please, I... I thought about it a lot while I was recovering. In between surgeries. I... want to. I want to try therapy. Not speech therapy, and not physical therapy. Real therapy. Yuri, I gotta say, I'm proud of you now, because you took the courage to finally take up, uh, take up therapy to to help yourself this time then I 
He looked away as a tear rolled down her face. Seeing where this is going, I leaned in and my and, and wrapped my arms around her. She gladly reciprocated the guest gesture and began to cry into my shoulder. Glob knows she needed to. I don't want to cut anymore. I never want to do it ever again. And I want to really try. My shoulder was being soaked. Well, you know what they, you know what someone else said, do or do not, there is no try. But I didn't mind. Try the best that I that I know that I can give. I can't rely on only you to help to help fix these issues. The son of a bitch, the speech is and when, when is ridiculous, but isn't that proof enough? It's all just gone way too far. Uh, if, if you're sure, Yuri. I rubbed her back. I am. I smiled softly and put my hand on her head. Finally, for once, I was the taller one. I guess we ain't small or short anymore. <laughs> and also, I put Yuri in a lip lock. A passionate one, I might add. The hug was nice, but this was even more so. And I felt content, knowing I was finally the one to initiate. But that wasn't the only thing that made me feel content. Of course not. Yuri was okay. And she wanted to get better. On her own will, she wanted to improve. I pulled away from her lips and laid my head on hers. I deeply in inhaled. No coconut. Sad, but I'm proud of you, Yuri. And I'm so happy that you're okay. Chapter 11, Coconut Princess. Hmm. I'm sorry, Finn, but they don't let you have your phone here. I'm going to be off the grid for a while. I look. That was the last text I was sent before they, my guess is, confiscated her phone. Who's they? Yuri was sent away to some far off mental hospital for treatment. Given the severity of her situation, they didn't let her go to any old therapist. She's getting the best treatment this side of the continent. Apparently. I sighed. It made sense for them to take her phone, thinking it over. Having access to the internet while they're supposed to be healing mentally is... Really? Just not a good idea? The internet is a cesspool of maliciousness. It wouldn't help. So I would have been fine with this normally. My only problem with it is, well, now I can't even talk to her. That's okay. Um, hopefully she'll be back soon. Just, just wait and hope. My loneliness was reaching new heights. Ugh. I rapidly scratched my head and then sighed again. I needed something to do. You know, maybe do some time for yourself or hang out, without, hang out with the other Dokis for some fun time as friends. Somebody to talk to. All I've done these few days is sit in a pile of my own crap. Uh, come on, Finn. What happened? He used, to be the, he used to be Bachelor of the Century. But your girlfriend leaves and now you can't do anything but sulk. You are, you really are hopeless without her. I shoved my hands into my pockets. Taking a night stroll was a terrible idea. All I'm doing is thinking how about how everything sucks. Ugh, no. Nothing sucks. None of what is happening sucks. Sucks for you? Yeah. But Yuri is finally getting help. You wanted this from the start. Yeah, sure, the hospital is 12 hours away by car. But who cares? Get over yourself. You can last a few weeks, months without seeing your girlfriend. However long it takes. Because you know what? You said you would be there for her. And right now, being there for her means not being there. Just let her have her time. You can deal. Of course. Of course. Just have patience, my dude. After that mental punching of my own head, I arrived back at my house. Only to notice that my mailbox has been messed with. Something I didn't notice on my way out. Messed with? 
I can't tell if the raccoons are messing with my mail or perhaps maybe it's just junk mail or something. Who the heck? I open it up. Where's the letter inside? I don't get mail. Dad gets all of the bills and stuff routed to where he stays. I muttered and pulled it out. Who the heck sent me? Lakeview Health Institution. Oh! This is the hospital Yuri got sent to. Um, this is the hospital Yuri is steady, staying at the betterment of her own health. Yeah. Looking over the rest of the letter, the name it was addressed to was mine. The handwriting of the name itself seemed rather elegant. AKA the writing, the handwriting I could recognize anywhere. Of course, it's Yuri. Who else would it be the, um, the elegant handwriting that we all know and love? Before even walking inside, I tore open the letter. Dear honey, salutations. Sorry I was, I haven't been able to contact you until now. In the text I sent, I stated that I wasn't allowed to have my cell phone with me. This is true. According to the doctors, it's so my healing process isn't ruined by anything I may see online. I can understand them. What I don't understand is that the only way I can communicate is through letters. This may be a fantasy of mine to communicate with a loved one through mail and love letters, but when it's your only option, you begin to dislike it. But anyway, I'm glad to be able to talk to you again. And before you ask the inevitable questions in your letter back, doctors are treating me nice. Yes, I'm safe. No, I'm not enjoying myself. Yes, it's hard. No, I don't feel as if I'm getting better just yet, but that's okay. Though, now that we're past the basic stuff, I I miss you, hon. It's been only around a week and a half, but I miss when we would sleep together. I miss when you would kiss me on the forehead and call me babe. I miss being able to rest my chin on your head. I miss being loved. Everything is so sterile here. It's dreadful. And, well, to get to the meat and potatoes of this hospital stay, it hasn't been going so well. I feel like we've made no progress and the doc and all of the doctors seem like they're trying to dodge the fact that my arms are covered in scars and my wrist is and my wrist still has an actively healing wound. It's ridiculous. The doctors keep trying to talk to me about my emotions and how I feel in my daily life. It just makes me want to scream. I'm not here to talk about my emotions. I'm here for you to fix me. Obviously, it's not that easy. I know that. But I just want him to start trying something. Anything. Maybe it takes more time. I'll go along with what they say. But for now, I love you. Oh Glob, I love you. Please stay safe. And please stay strong. Farewell. Sincerely and with love, Yuri. Well, I'm glad to know that she's doing alright in the hospital, so... That really makes me happy. Like I said, We'll just have to hope and wait. I set down the letter. Jeez, that was rough. That was rough. She seemed so. So miserable. It was understandable given her situation. I would be too. But just because something is realistic doesn't mean it's good. I opened up my door and walked into the kitchen. I set the letter down on the counter and walked over to my collection of office supplies. They weren't in a kitchen count a kitchen drawer, but instead all on in a desk close by. It was convenient to keep it all near the bar, given I like to sit and do homework there. It was a nice workspace. Anyway, I need to write Yuri back. I grabbed a piece of paper and pen. Sitting down at the aforementioned bar, I got to work. I sent out the pen and, re and began to read over what I had written. Dear Yuri, Hey, it's Finn. I'm glad to know you're okay and, the doctors, and that the doctors are treating you nice. <laughs> Though, you don't seem to be happy about this ordeal and I don't blame you. Look, I... I miss you too. I miss you so much. I practically can't function without you here. It's gonna make me sound like a total sissy, but every day I wish you were here and in my arms. But you can't be, because you're in there. And speaking of in there, I can't understand you, you wanting to make progress, but you need to give it time. 
The doctors ask about your emotions and what seem like ridiculous questions because they're trying to pinpoint how you think and how you feel. It seems arbitrary, but just trust them, okay? They're there to help you. Just have to trust them. I know you understand that, but you give, but you even say that you're going to still follow what they want. But I think you need to hear it from me too. It'll happen. You'll be better in time. Rome wasn't built in a day, babe. I love you too, and I wish you were here. Right back soon. Bit. I was a little blunt, yeah. But sometimes, you have to be. I could be supportive. Of course I could. But I also needed to approach her along. I hope. This letter could be a huge mistake. No, no. I shook my head. Negative thoughts don't help anything. They don't. I folded up the piece of paper and grabbed a dusty envelope from the desk drawer. I stuffed it inside and sealed it all up. I wrote the addresses and even put a little heart next to Yuri's name. Hopefully she'll enjoy that. Then I looked up and down for a stamp. Only not to find Jack. I only knew I had some around though, so I didn't give up just yet. Though, just when I was about to, ah, I pulled out an even dustier piece of paper and smiled. Two stamps. That's two letters I can write. I counted my blessings and put one on the envelope. Then I walk outside, put it in my mailbox, flip the flag up, and walk back inside. I fell onto the couch inside, feeling myself sink into the cushions. I reached into my pocket only to remember that I forgot my phone in the kitchen. I groaned. I didn't want to get up. I didn't want to turn on the television either. I began to look around my general area for something to do. Anything. I was desperate. Uh... My eyes caught something. Smiling slightly, I reached over and grabbed it. I turned it around a bit in my hands and really felt the weight. It's nice. I smelled it. Mmm. I brought it away from my face and turned it over one last time. Then I opened it up and read the first page. Mural of Markov. Well, nothing but a good old book to read to pass the time. Two days had passed since I got Yuri's letter. I was on my way home when I noticed that my mailbox had been again been tampered with. I rushed over excitedly. That was quick. I said opening, uh, pulling open the little door. Yep, another letter. And in just two days. Honestly, props to the postal service. I shook my head. <laughs> five out of five stars for the postal service, I'd say. I'm getting distracted. I shut my mailbox, turned the flag down, and walked inside. I tossed my back to the side and walked into the kitchen. I sat down at the bar and finally opened up the new letter. A smile on my face. Uh, which slowly fell as I read the content contents. Dear honey, salutations again. I bring good news. The doctors have leaned in into the idea of discussing my actual problems. The only issue is that I'm not sure if I'm ready for that yet. I wanted to rush into it, yes, but I believe I may have jumped the gun. It is way more difficult than I thought it would be. Whenever I make an attempt to talk about it, the only thing I can think about is the feel of the blade across my skin and an overwhelming feeling of nausea. To put it simply, I'm scared, hon. I'm terrified. Every time I try to open up the uh, to the doctor, I feel like I'm a little girl. I wish you were here with me. I know you would make it easier. You would hold my hand as I talk through it, and would tell me you loved me and you were and proud <laughs> and were proud of me when I got past a particularly tough spot. <laughs> Sorry, my uh, tongue stopped working. Things are just hard. I really need something like that. If I'm being fully honest, it was probably for the reason I was able to tell you. Subconsciously, I knew you would love me anyway, and I would love you, and I would love you back even more. I'll keep working on, and I'll keep working at it, so I can be proud of myself too. Farewell, love, Yuri. And that's great news, I'd say. Aw, oh, man. I know that the situation isn't very good right now, but these depressing letters are really getting to me. I shook my head and stood up to grab my letter supplies. Paper, dusty envelope, and my last stamp. 
Guess I'll have to run to the post office. Hey, Yuri. It's Finn. First thing I want to say is that I love you, and I'm so proud of you. I can see it in your last letter. Plain as day, you're miserable. But the fact that you're holding out is why I'm so proud. Yes, you complain. But who doesn't about some things? You complain, but you know how important this is. And for that, I commend you. But look, I'm sorry that this letter is serious and let's get down to business, but I have a tactic for you. Something that should help you with, with talking to the doctors. I want you to imagine something. I want you to imagine you're talking to a person. A specific person. Someone you love and, so and, and, that, some <laughs> and that loves you back. You see where I am going with this? You've done it before. And yes, I know. Therapy is a way bigger of a deal than just talking to a crowd about a poem you wrote. I know. But don't you think our relationship has grown a little bit since then? Back when I was, your, when I was just your friend and that worked well. So I want you to imagine that you're telling your problems to me. I'm listening, babe. I'm holding your hand, okay? I can't be there, but I'm there with you. Alright? I love you. And please, tell me how it goes. Love, Finn. Folded, deposited, uh, deposited, sealed, and addressed. Outgoing only a few moments later. But this all led me back to the same dilemma from a few days ago. I was bored. I, finish, I finished Mural. I finished it within 6 hours of opening it. Any homework? No, I did it all yesterday. When I was just as bored as I was now. This boredom led me to lying down on the couch, phone in hand, mindlessly scrolling through my photo gallery as the television blared some crap I couldn't care less about. Something that, these days, I found myself doing often. Usually I didn't find anything interesting in my photos, but this time I found an old photo of me and Sayori. We both looked to be about 12 years old, and we were as happy as could be. Uh, and we definitely weren't bored. Uh, ring. Hello? Hey, Sayori. Oh, hey, Finn. She said, seemingly happy that I gave her a call. What's up? Well, to get straight to the point, I had been doing that quite a bit recently. I was wondering if you wanted to hang out. So now that your cute girlfriend is off getting healthy, you want to go to your best friend? Your second fiddle? Well, I don't have it, Finn. Uh, hmm. I chuckled. You mean you won't have it? She blew a raspberry. You know what I mean. She then giggled. Of course you can come over. Do you have anything in mind that we can do? Well, do you still have that old Nintendo? She audibly gasped. You mean the... I nodded, even though she couldn't see me. I do. I... I'm not sure. I would have to look for it. W what? The NES? The, uh, the SNES? Or the Nintendo 64? Or the GameCube? The Wii? <laughs> and the list goes on. Uh... You wanna help me look? I'm on my way. I hung up the phone. You help her look. <laughs> I mean, if she's having trouble looking for it, of course I would help. Because I love Sayori. <laughs> and in only 10 seconds, I was knocking Sayori's door. Uh, well, in at least in this mod, as friends, but in other mods, I love her. <laughs> Come in. Sayori then dragged me into her house. Getting dragged around by women. A, a concerningly common theme. I woke up feeling like absolute garbage. Ooh, this is a very nice living room you got here, Sayori. Where the heck am I? And in a state of confusion, it was a familiar place. All right. It was Sayori's living room. Oh yeah. I, yeah, I just noticed that her living room is kind of mirrored like mine, but <laughs> eh, just like two sides of a coin, am I right? I must have fallen asleep on her couch. I moved to get up, given how uncomfortable I was before I heard a shift of movement. 
I looked to my right and saw Sayori asleep on the couch. She seemed happy. Whatever it is she's dreaming about must be pretty nice. I whispered to myself. Stirred once again, though I bit my tongue. Uh. He looked like a puppy. In a good way, of course. I shook my head. Who am I trying to justify, justify myself to? I stood up and stretched, finally deciding to move on from staring at a body of a sleeping young girl. Ugh. Sleeping on a couch is not fun. Uh. But what was fun was the day me and Sayori had yesterday. It was... It was nice. It was really nice to be able to talk to her again. And playing that old Nintendo, I'm not entirely sure what console it is, but I'm pretty sure we just played Smash. Not that kind of Smash. This Smash. You guys know what I mean. <laughs> Seriously, not that kind of Smash. Shut the fuck up. To really feel a connection. See, I never really understood the phrase good old times growing up. Mostly because in my eyes there were no good there were no old times that were good to, to think back on. But hanging out with Sayori, I feel, is one of those times. Being able to feel like a kid again is something that that very rarely feels authentic. But playing old Nintendo games with juice-stained controllers and greasy pizza hands just felt right. In all honesty, I really, really needed this. Just some kind of break. A break from the drama. A break from Monica. A break from Yuri. Well, her problems, to be more specific. They can be quite exhausting. I love her. Of course I do. I love her more than the sun and moon. And while Yuri is, obviously, a deeply troubled individual, and that's normally uh, such a huge turn-off. But I chose her for a reason, you know. To me, she's so much more than that. She's so much more than just some broken girl. She's the love of my life. And I wouldn't change anything about her. Her problems, if anything, make her seem even stronger. By now, a lot of people would have just said, forget it, and, well, uh, off themselves, but not Yuri. Heck no, not Yuri. Back in the hospital, as she explained the events of the day to me, she kept insisting that it was an accident, that she wasn't suicidal. And I trust her. I trust her fully. I know she isn't suicidal. I took a deep breath in and smiled. My strong girlfriend. Stronger than I'll ever even hope to be. After that rather lengthy internal monologue, I turned back to Sayori. Still asleep. Oh, and she's now back with her red bow. Okay. Uh, she would appreciate a nice breakfast, yeah? <laughs> of course, because she wants breakfast. All it took was one day to get another letter. Every two days seems to be the pattern. I was on my way back from school and afterwards the bookstore. When I saw it, my mailbox flagged up. Why was I at the bookstore? I had decided to try and check out some books that Yuri talked about in the past. I didn't want to read The Girl Next Door, but some others seemed interesting. Like this one about a 12-year-old kid going on a quest to stop uh, the thief of some bolt of lightning or something. Uh, I forgot that one title again. Was it Percy Jackson? Yeah, I think it could be Percy Jackson. I don't recall the name of it, but it sounds wicked. Uh, setting my bag on the ground, I, I put my flag down and opened up the my mailbox. Okay, yep, I think it is Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief, I think. <laughs> I watched the movie. It's pretty okay. It's, there it is. One single letter. I need more friends to talk to me by mail. I grabbed the letter and tore it open. Salutations. I have great news. It worked. By glob, it worked. Only for a little bit, though. Halfway, though, I began to lose vision of you in my head and I just... Sorry, but I just locked up. I couldn't tell the doctor... I couldn't tell the doctor was disappointed. But he said he was happy that I was making progress, so I guess that's good. To be honest, I am not sure how long I'm going to be here. My original thought of only a few weeks is not looking good. At this rate, it's going to be much longer. And I'm not excited about that. But whatever helps me get better, I suppose. I love you. Farewell, Yuri. 
Well, that tactic worked. Somewhat. I sighed. Time, time. Patience, patience. I needed to go get some stamps. Surprisingly, none randomly appeared in my desk drawer. Cool. I quickly entered my house and grabbed my writing supplies. My plan was to write the letter while I was riding the, riding the bus. Save time and I could write in a different environment. That always helps or so I've heard. I exited my house and locked the door behind me. As soon as I got onto the bus, I sat down and began to write. I would stand, but I can't exactly stand up and write. I would look like a dork. Yuri, that's great news. I'm so happy for you. And don't worry about making instant progress. You locked up? That's okay. You can try again. You can keep trying. Eventually, you'll do it. I know you will. Your assault shows me that plain as day. And don't worry about how long it takes. It's hard to not have you here. But I know, but I'd r much rather you be healthy and better than back here and, well, hurting. I can't help you like they can. You said it yourself. But it's going to be hard because of. God dang. Oh, God dang it. Of course it is. You said it so many times, both of us. And I'm sorry that I don't have another magical cure all method to give you in this letter. I right, just wanted you to know that I'm behind you. I always am. Right now, you don't need that. What you need is to keep your head facing up and in front of you. Keep moving forward. I love you. Finn. Aw, oh, how sweet. There was apparently an old woman in the seat beside me. Thanks. I was three more times more uncomfortable. Uh, I looked out the window and massaged my nose. That letter felt pointless, but I was at that point. It was that time, where I could no longer give words of encouragement. I was at the point where I had to hope she could pull through. It's all in her hands now, I muttered. What is, dear? Uh, this bus ride cannot end any sooner. Stupid post office. Might as well buy a hundred stamps while I'm here. Never want to come back. I walked up to the man at the counter. Uh, how may I help you? Can I get some stamps? Sure thing. How many? Uh, 20? Well, the, sheep, the, the stamps come on the sheet of 25. Does that work for you? Sure. Ugh, glob. This sucks. I paid for my stamps and got the heck out of there. But as soon as I stepped outside, I stopped. What am I doing? I walked back in, grabbed a free envelope, and put my letter inside. I put one of my new stamps in the corner and walked back up to the guy at the counter. Missed me? Sure did. I chuckled. This guy is making this place bearable. Think you can mail an envelope for me? Sure can. He took my envelope. Have a good day. Uh, and then I got the heck out of there. Back to the bus. A 20 minute bus ride for some glob dang stamps. <laughs> well, I uh, I feel ya man, I feel ya. Things I do for love.